I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We shout together on this day, Alleluia, He is risen. For we celebrate today the risen Christ, the promise fulfilled, the love and grace and forgiveness of God embodied in the resurrected Christ. And we mark this celebration today by reading the gospel account of that moment of resurrection that is realized. We aren't sitting in the resurrection appearances of Christ yet. We aren't preparing for the continuation of this movement through the leadership of the apostles. These stories will come over the next several weeks as we continue to celebrate Easter, culminating 50 days from now with the birth of the church when we celebrate Pentecost. But today, we are still in the garden, still at the tomb. We enter into this day in mourning. We enter into this day with death hanging overhead. The women, Mary, go to the tomb to care for the body in its state of death. The women go to the tomb to do their duty and to show their love for this teacher who has moved their hearts, who has shown them a different way, who was betrayed, tortured, crucified because of fear, because of hardness of heart, because creation could not understand what was being offered to it. The Roman Empire carries out the task because Jesus is causing a headache. The Roman Empire carries out the task because Jesus is an easy symbolic victory to keep the restless people under their thumb. The Roman Empire carries out the task because the people of God are afraid of what Jesus is teaching, of what Jesus is offering, of what Jesus' presence actually means for them, for their lives, for their relationships with one another and with God. On the cross, Jesus accomplishes something far greater than what the empire was hoping to prevent. On the cross, Jesus accomplishes something far more powerful than what the people could understand in that moment. The curtain veil of the temple is torn in two as Christ dies, just as God's own heart is torn in two, just as Christ's being is torn in two on that cross. God's heart is torn as God experiences that ultimate grief of the loss of a child, and not just loss, but loss from betrayal, loss from fear, loss from those whom God loves. Creation, the very good creation, has risen up and killed God's own son, tearing God's heart in two. Christ is torn in two as the human and divine natures of Christ are placed on that cross to bear the burdens of creation, to bear their fear, to bear their hate, to bear their lack of faith. Christ dies on that cross, and yet this isn't the end of the story as we're about to find out. Mary comes to the garden tomb to mourn for Christ's death, to tend to his ripped and ruined body, to say her final goodbyes, to a spiritual leader that has completely changed her life, her heart, her understanding of this world, this creation of God, and of her own relationship with that creator, God. And the stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. They have taken Jesus' body in one final act of betrayal, one final act of torture. Or so she thinks. She doesn't recognize the angels sitting in the tomb. She doesn't recognize Christ resurrected standing before her until he calls her by name, Mary. And her eyes are opened. Teacher. The first act of Christ's resurrected presence in this world is to call one of his most trusted followers, the apostle to the apostles by her name, an act of intimacy and love, an acknowledgement of a relationship that extends beyond this life. For in this moment, Christ is modeling the love of God, which is now on offer to creation forever and always. Through his triumph over death, through the promised fulfillment of salvation being extended to all of creation, without reservation, from this moment forward, 
And Christ models that love in the form of relationship. Christ models that love in the reality that God can call each and every single one of us, does call each and every single one of us by name into that relationship, into that love. All it takes from us is to recognize Christ standing before us and offering this love and relationship to us. All it takes from us is to know Christ deeply in this moment and see him. Mary then went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. Once we have acknowledged Christ standing before us, body resurrected, love embodied, salvation offered, promise fulfilled, we are called to take this message, to take this offering of relationship between and with one another and between and with God out into this world. We are called today on this Easter day, in this celebration of the risen Christ, to share with our neighbors, to share with our closest friends and family that I have seen the Lord. For Christ's resurrection begins on this day. It is not culminated on this day. Christ's offering of love and relationship with us, God's offering of love and relationship with us, and our understanding of that love and relationship with Christ, with God, with one another, begins on this day. Today is the beginning of our faith journey as followers in the way of love, following in the footsteps of Christ. Today is the beginning of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ resurrected for us. Today is the beginning of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, Savior of us all, who dies for our sins, who offers to us a new way of being in this creation, a new way of understanding our relationship to this creation and to our Creator. Jesus' story doesn't end with his death on the cross. Jesus' story doesn't end with his body in the tomb. Jesus' revolution, Jesus' overthrow of empire, begins in these final days, begins in that garden when he approaches Mary, weeping and mourning. Jesus was not simply a freedom fighter standing against empire, standing against an occupying army. Reducing Christ to that simple, singular identity denies Christ's divinity, denies the power of what we celebrate on this day. That empire couldn't kill Christ. That death couldn't defeat Christ. That in his resurrection, something else has begun on this day. For no grave can contain him in the power of God's saving grace for God's creation. No grave could hide away his body and end this revolution. No empire could hope to make an example of another revolutionary raising a fuss. For Christ came to accomplish something else in this creation. To learn and grow with us. To learn and love with us. To learn and know with us what it means to be in and of creation. All of the pain and all of the joy. So that he could be offered for us so that he could take on our burdens and offer back a burden that was easy, a yoke that is light, in comparison to the weight of the world that we carried with us. This is what we celebrate on this Easter day. Joy in the impossible. Joy in our knowledge that love is offered to us from that empty tomb. Joy in our faith that Jesus Christ has risen today and in that joy, we cannot help but shout out at the top of our lungs, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.